Hello, this is your prof next door, Sir Joseph. I hope you're all doing great and I hope you are staying safe at home. So, for today, we will continue our discussion with another episode for Dose Laurel series. So, for today, we will be talking about the 1943 Constitution. So, of course, as we all know, the Constitution is an integral part of nation building. Without the Constitution, we cannot simply implement laws or create them. Every country that has a government needs a constitution. So now, let us go go back sa history natin at pag-aralan natin ano nga ba ang uh, kahalagahan ng 1943 constitution at ano ba ang naging contribution ni Jose Laurel doon. So, kung babalikan po natin, 1942, dumating ang mga hapon dito sa Pilipinas. And then of course, as we all know, they were able to Uh, drive out the Americans and ordered the Filipinos to establish their own government under this, the, the Japanese rule. So now, ang constitution na gustong ipagawa ng mga Japanese dito sa atin is of course should be in line with the uh, Greater East Asia co-prosperity sphere na gustong ipatupad ng Japan sa Asia. So in short, they wanted to drive out the Western invaders or the Western colonial masters and establish their own form of uh, alliance with the different Asian countries. So dito sa 1943 constitution, they ordered the Kalibapi or the uh, kapisanan ng paglilingkod sa bagong Pilipinas as the only political organization na meron at that time. So yung Kalibapi, sila ang bumuo ng Uh, delegation na may 20 members para bumuo ng constitution. And of course, as we all know, isa si Jose Laurel sa mga napili as part of the delegation, being a member of the Kalibati. So ngayon, uh, bago pa magawa itong constitution, actually, may nangyari na uh, isa sa mga uh, muntik ng kumitel sa buhay ni Dr. Laurel, which is of course yung pagkakabaril sa kanya. So, uh, nung bago magawa yung 1943 Constitution, actually, nasa hospital si Jose Laurel. So, ano ba nangyari sa kanya? Uh, habang naglalaro siya sa isang uh, golf country club sa Wakuwak, siya ay binaril ng isang nagnangalang Little Joe. So, of course, nung nabaril siya, dinala siya sa hospital and then Uh, buti na lamang, it, uh, evaded, the bullet evaded vital parts of its body. So ngayon, ang nangyari dito, yung mga hapon, they wanted to punish kung sino man yung gumawa kay Jose Laurel, but uh, Jose Laurel uh, did not want to take revenge dun sa gumawa sa kanya nung pagbaril. So actually, si, uh, yung, mga, yung mga hapon, may mga hinuli sila ng mga Filipino at ipinapatay nila just for the mere accusation na sila yung bumaril kay Jose Laurel. But uh, Jose Laurel do not want to push through sa kung ano mang violence ang pwede pa mangyari dahil uh, gusto nilang mabaw- mabawian yung gumawa sa kanya. But ayun uh, na nga, uh, even though uh, hindi pa nauhuli si Little Joe, hindi na, niya hinaya, hindi na niya pinabayaan na umatay pa ng ibang Pilipino yung mga hapon in exchange sa pagkakabaril sa kanya. So ngayon, habang nasa ospital si Dr. Jose Laurel, nagpatawag siya doon ng meeting para pag-usapan nga yung mga magiging contents ng constitution. And then of course, noong uh, 1943, ito na nga, yung uh, constitution natin ay nabuo with the promise ng mga Japanese uh, Imperial Army na bibigyan tayo ng independence. So sinabi ni Premier Hideki Tojo na kapag ka naglaon, pagkakalooban tayo ng independence as long as susunod tayo doon sa gusto nilang mangyari na pagkakaroon ng uh, alliance with Japan. So, ito na nga, uh, ang Kalibapi, the elected members of the National Assembly as soon as nung natapos yung constitution and then later on, the, the assemblymen elected Jose Laurel as the president of the country, the Philippines, for the newly formed 1943 Constitution. So ngayon, ito, noong October 14, 1943, Jose Laurel was inaugurated as the first president ng Second Philippine Republic. So ngayon, 
uh, alam naman natin, no sumunod na taon, 1944, the Americans attempted an, a return sa Pilipinas under sa leadership ni Douglas MacArthur. And then, ayun na nga, uh, naganap yung uh, Battle of Manila, naganap yung mga iba't ibang mga digmaan. So, Jose, Jose Laurel was forced to declare martial law and then he was de uh, forced to declare a state of war. And uh, nung bandang uh, December 1944, he moved up dun sa Baguio para uh, hindi siya maabutan ng labanan, para hindi siya madamay sa labanan. And then, ultimately, he was brought to Tokyo, Japan in March 1945. And then, ayun na nga, dun nila inantay yung naging conclusion ng gera. So, August 15, ang mga Hapon, natalo sila fully ng mga Americans and uh, forced them to surrender. After two days, si Jose Laurel declared that he is dissolving the Second Philippine Republic. So, makikita natin, ang government ni Jose Laurel nagtagal lamang ng three years. So, ngayon, uh, yung mga Americans sa pagbabalik nila sa Pilipinas, sa pag-establish o sa pagbabalik ng Commonwealth Government ng Pilipinas, they declared that every decision or every act or everything that the Second Philippine Republic has made should be considered as null and void. So, ibig sabihin, hindi nila kinikilala yung anumang nagawa ng Second Philippine Republic ni Jose Laurel. And on top of it, they ordered the arrest of those who collaborated with the Japanese. So, lahat ng mga Filipino officials that served together with the Japanese was uh, imprisoned at uh, kinasuhan ng prison. So, of course, si Jose Laurel, nasa Japan siya and um, he was accused sa uh, kasalanan ng prison. So, of course, while nasa Japan, Jose Laurel is waiting for his return sa Manila para kaharapin yung mga accusations of treason laban sa kanya. So, kung titignan po natin, babalikan yung naging past lessons natin, ano nga ba ang nag-udyok kay Jose Laurel para makipag-cooperate sa mga Japanese? Babalikan natin, di ba? Jose Laurel was instructed by the president himself, Manuel Quezon, to uh, cooperate with the Japanese para maiwasan yung anumang paglalanang kaguluhan. At kung titignan natin sa uh, iba pa nating mga naging discussion, Jose Laurel tried to prevent the Japanese from conscripting Filipinos. Uh, Jose Laurel prevented the uh, further bloodshed na pwede maganap kapag uh, maraming mga Filipinos ang nagpatuloy sa uh, pakikipaglaban sa mga Japanese. And uh, pinabayaan, hindi pinabayaan ni Jose Laurel yung kalagayan ng mga Filipinos during uh, the Japanese occupation. So, uh, dun sa magiging next na usapan natin, pag-usapan natin yung trial naman ni Jose Laurel. So, nevertheless, yung 1943 Constitution became the uh, became the stage in order for the Second Philippine Republic to establish itself in accordance doon sa kagustuhan ng government ng Japan. So, ano ba ang promise ng Japan? Once we put up a constitution, once we put up our own government, they will eventually give us our independence. So, makikita natin mula pa dun sa panahon ng mga Amerikano, ang tagal nang hinihingi ng Philippine uh, statesmen yung pagbibigay ng kalayaan sa Pilipinas. So, nandito tayo noong 1943, hoping na mabigyan ng kalayaan ng Pilipinas through the installment of the Second Philippine Republic. So, pati na natin, the 1943 Constitution became a uh, some sort of uh, way para mabigyan tayo supposedly ng kalayaan ng mga Japanese. Pero, alam naman natin, dahil sa naging conclusion ng gera and because of the American victory over the Japanese during World War II, hindi na natin nakita kung ano ba yung resulta nung 1943 Constitution and hindi rin natin makikita kung ano ba yung true intentions ng Imperial Japan dun sa kanilang gusto mangyari na Greater East Asia co-prosperity sphere. Kasi sa sinasabi ng mga Hapon, kaya lang nila ginagawa yung invasion sa mga iba't ibang 
mga Asian countries is, is because they just wanted to drive out the Western invaders para yung mga Asyano uh, makapamuhay at mabigyan ng sariling independence ng walang foreign or Western control. So, yun ang sinasabi na intention ng mga Japanese at that time. So, uh, we will never know kung ano talaga yung uh, magiging resulta nun in the long run if uh, ever naging, hindi naging kaparehas yung resulta nung World War II. But anyway, I hope you have learned something and I hope you will remember all the things that we have talked about. If you have questions, if you have comments, feel free to write them or to post them in our comment box. I will try to reply and to answer your questions as much as I can. So, thank you very much for listening. This is your Prof Next Door. Once again, thanking you. So, stay safe, take care of yourselves, and take care of each other. Have a good day.